Tuesday, Day 2. War and Peace. Pequot War. Short and bloody, the Pequot War, 1636 to 1638, was the first major clash between Native Americans and English settlers in the New World. The Pequot were one of the most powerful tribes in the region that's now Connecticut, but they were nearly annihilated in the war. In the wake of the conflict, Native Americans in New England were pushed onto smaller and smaller settlements as their land was taken by white settlers streaming to the New World from Europe. The first permanent European settlements in Connecticut were founded by the Puritans in 1633. Tensions with the Pequots flared almost immediately. The immediate cause of the war was the massacre of an English ship's crew in 1636, which the Puritans blamed on Pequot warriors. The English launched retaliatory raids and quickly convinced many other Indian tribes in the area to join the war. With their native allies and superior weaponry, the English easily defeated the Pequots. By modern standards, the English war was nearly genocidal. The English soldiers regarded all Native Americans as heathens and a threat to peace in the New England wilderness, and the soldiers indiscriminately killed hundreds of Pequot women and children as well as warriors. With most of the Pequot leadership wiped out, the Treaty of Hartford in 1638 put a halt to the brutal war. The English, determined to erase even the name of the Pequots, officially abolished the tribe, enslaving some members and distributing the rest as spoils to their Native American allies. Major conflict between Native Americans and the English would resurface, however, during King Philip's War in 1675. Additional Facts 1. The name Connecticut came from the Mohegan word Connecticut, meaning Long Tidal River. 2. The English outlawed the use of the word Pequot after the war, but it entered New England lore anyway, and later served as the inspiration for the name of the ship Pequod in Herman Melville's masterpiece Moby Dick. 3. Descendants of the Pequots, confined to a tiny reservation in Connecticut, eventually opened the world's largest casino, Foxwoods in 1993. Wednesday, Day 3, Rights and Reform Slavery Beginning in 1619, when the first group of 20 Africans arrived at Jamestown in chains, thousands of slaves were imported into the British colonies of North America. Within a few generations, slave labor formed the basis of the South's agricultural economy and had spread north to the rest of the original 13 colonies. By any standard, slavery was an unspeakable human tragedy that caused immeasurable harm to its victims. Although slavery was a part of the economy in both the North and the South, the institution eventually took on distinct guises in the two regions. To describe the differences, historians distinguish between a slave society and a society with slaves. A slave society was one in which slavery dominated the major forms of economic production, which was the case in the South by the 18th century. A society with slaves, in contrast, refers to a society in which slaves did not dominate the economic modes of production and instead provided supplemental labor, such as work conducted within the home. In Massachusetts in the mid-1700s, for instance, only about one in eight households owned a slave, and the typical slaveholder had only two slaves. Rather than toil in the fields, Northern slaves often worked as maids, blacksmiths, coopers, carpenters, and house servants. Because of the differing role slavery played in the societies of the North and the South, the extent to which the two regions relied on slavery began to diverge in the 18th century. In the South, slavery became more important, while in the North, the institution began to fade. At the time of the American Constitutional Convention of 1787, Many of the founders assumed that slavery would eventually die out. Indeed, after the convention, various states in the North began the process of abolishing slavery, granting slaves their freedom in a given year or at a certain age, depending on the law their state established. However, just as slavery was ending in the North, the invention of the cotton gin in 1793 guaranteed that the institution would remain integral to the Southern economy laying the groundwork for widening regional differences in the 19th century. Additional Facts 1. The 1840 census listed one slave in New Hampshire. 
Two, slavery was also common throughout Europe's other New World colonies. In the French colony of Haiti, Toussaint Louverture, 1743-1803, led a successful slave revolt in 1793. 3. The first 20 African slaves taken to Jamestown aboard a Dutch warship were from the modern-day nations of Congo and Angola.